So here we are at the Midland Game Fair 2017. And as you can see, I, I spied my little eye. Something beginning with Rack. <laughs> Neil uh, met up with me and was very kindly, uh, very kindly uh, supplied me with a free ticket, which he managed to get courtesy of Gunmart. So I was very grateful for that. And you can see here, this is Ash at uh, Varmint Shooters UK. And he runs the G&T stand, I think it's called. And uh, yeah, if any of you guys need um, an air rifle or anything like that, really, go and see him because he'll do you a deal. And uh, if you tell him I sent you, he might do you an even better deal. And you can also talk to him about long range shooting. You know, if you want to go for a lesson up in Grimsby, I'm sure he'll help you out. You can see there, there was the armed police. No offence to the lady on the left, but she doesn't look in the best shape. I'm not sure how well she would uh, do if ISIS turned up and started, you know, <laughs> shooting AKs around. But nonetheless, they were armed with the new H&K MP7 which is something that you don't normally see in the UK and you know, very modern indeed, very similar to the um, uh, FNP90 so it shoots a very small calibre rifle cartridge which is very effective and you can see there, that's one of those tactical gamo brake barrels and uh, yeah, they're multi-shot brake barrel those tactical ones are really big sellers apparently even though they're god awful things but obviously kids like it, it looks like it's out of Call of Duty and yeah, they sell basically and you see here Day State, there's a lot to say about them really very nice rifles indeed but more interestingly Brocock now this, they're often overlooked by people to be honest but Brocock are basically owned by Day State now they used to be rubbish rifles, to be honest, but now they're basically the same as a day state, but at a much more affordable price. And they are slightly different. There, are, there is a few unique features about them. For instance, the they're sort of semi bullpup, so the action's a bit further back. And you know, with that carbon fiber, fiber bottle, it does lend itself to being a very compact little package. So definitely worth considering. And you can see there's. Basque and all the you know all the usual sort of stalls and stuff. To be honest, I um I did take a fair bit of money, but there was nothing I really needed to be honest. So I spent most of the day just sort of gassing, really chatting with Neil about YouTube and shooting and <laughs> Mike Yardley. <laughs> no, we didn't talk about Mike Yardley, but yeah, just just chewing the fat really to be honest as I said we got some free tickets so we thought we'd go along a lot of these shows are great you know it's like Merry Hill for shooters basically so if there's something you need um, then yeah it's all under one roof it's great and you know so socially it's nice like I said you can meet up with friends and it's a you know it's a nice day out but uh, you know it, they are much of a muchness to be honest as you can see here you've got the um, Regency Rifles 2-2 Rimfire range, again there at most of the shows. A great opportunity if you're a, you know, you don't have an FAC yet, or maybe you don't ever intend to get an FAC, but you've never had a chance to shoot a Rimfire before, especially a semi-automatic, you know, it's worth going down there and having a go. It's not cheap, um, I think it's like a pound a shot to be honest, or, you know, close enough. So, yeah, it's expensive, but, you know, it gives you the chance to have a go, which is great. You know, it's, it's great for everyone. And you can see here, you've got, um, yeah, loads of shotguns for sale. I didn't see any particular steels, but you can see there, that's one of those AR Turkish looking, or Turkish shotguns that are sort of AR looking. Um, there's a lot of those coming into the country at the moment, and I believe that specific one, Neil's actually reviewing fairly soon. So definitely keep your eyes open for that because, you know, compared to, you know, the olden days where we could just get Sagers, you know, these things are very, good, you know, as I said, very good value for money. And you can see here the uh, knife tent. I was, you know, they've got a good variety, but I was really looking for some sort of wet stones uh, and a strop setup, which I didn't really kind of come across. And it's something I really know nothing about. I've currently got a Spyderco Sharp Maker, which I use for sharpening my blades, which does the job. But I'd quite like to get into being able to do it really well with like a mirror polish. But I don't really know what I'm doing or what to buy. So if there is a kit any of you guys recommend, I'll be very grateful if you'd, you know, if you'd let me know. And you can see here, I finally met up with Tom. He was here with his in-laws. Um, and uh, there's Rod Dog who was really well behaved actually, considering it was um, 
you know, quite a hot day. You can see him there getting excited with that little girl playing with the ball. But other than that, um, yeah, he was all right. He was quite chilled out. And, and the good thing about these shows is if you do bring a dog, there's so many places selling dog stuff. So there's always water and snacks and things for them to sort of, you know, to be sort of refreshed by. So, yeah, it's very dog friendly. Now you can see here, obviously, these are all the show dogs. Now I must admit, it's you know it's quite a hot day. They're in an enclosed space. It's not something I would you know I don't know. I mean yeah, it doesn't do them any harm I suppose. But they they didn't look happy. Put it put it that way. And I don't think I would be either to be honest in that situation. But it's good to see them. You know, um, always good. To, you know, if you're into that, you know, all the different breeds are there. They, I think they have a a show of some sort as well, so you can you know a competition, so you can take your dog and show it off and that sort of thing. So. Yeah, it's something for everyone, really. A good sort of all-round, you know, family day out. And great for the kids, too. There's always plenty for the for, for them to see and do. And they don't get too bored. Although, luckily, I didn't bring any this year. Um, in years gone by, with my ex, obviously, you know, you'd have to bring the kids. But, yeah, they'd, it's, there's usually plenty for them to do. And they love the animals, as, you, as I'm sure you can see. Now, going out. Now, this was a big deal. And it's always the Midland Game Fair that has this problem. It takes ages. I left at, like, 2 o'clock. And, you know, leaving early, you think I'll be all right. But there you go. Stuck in traffic. Even though, as you can see, just there, there's an exit. But they wouldn't let us out of that. One bloke did just fly past and got, went out. But the rest of us were queuing up for an hour and a quarter. And that's leaving early. So always bear that in mind. So that's it for the Midland Game Fair. See you at the next one.